Don't say anything you regret. <laughs> uh, I've made a career out of talking to machinists and engineers. So that's something like they, <laughs> there's always like, as soon as the camera goes on, they all, uh, <laughs> yeah. Where do I put my hands, man? Dude, I can't tell you how many times I've had that conversation. It's <laughs> put them down. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, I mean, obviously the, you've got some manufacturing experience based on like that a lot of people know about with the orange County shoppers and things like that. But can you tell me about your background specifically in machining? Like where, where did that start and, and kind of how did you get to the point you're at now? Yeah. So my whole life, I always wanted to make things and, and, and be like an environment where I could be creative and build something that hasn't been seen before. And I started off life with like, uh, I jumped right in after, after school, I jumped right into making video games. And I was a, I was a 3D modeler animator at Incredible Technologies. And uh, I love that job. I love working with those people, but I quickly wanted to do something different. <laughs> and so, so I made the transition uh, when, when I got offered a job at Orange County Choppers to actually make uh, motorcycles and motorcycle components. And I, I had a lot of freedom while I was there. Uh, I was actually there about 16 years, uh, worked on over 300 motorcycles and just was really able to, you know, explore the different passions I had with creating and building. Um, also, uh, we had a, a pretty intense machine shop that I had access to. And I guess it, you know, the first like piece of equipment I probably jumped on was probably like a water jet. You know, I was like, yeah, man, 90,000 PSI of water pressure and abrasive. This is great. And from there, you know, I hopped over to a mill because, you know, uh, I needed to continue to make these components. And when a lot of people, uh, to, you know, left choppers, um, I found myself in uh, a giant machine shop with with literally no one there. <laughs> so so I, I, I taught myself how to create uh code, you know, G code on, on my 3d parts. I started making all my own fixtures and started making parts. And I just loved the whole connection because before it was just, you know, design something, then pass it off to the machine shop, get, get, get client approval, pass it off to the machine shop, you know, design something, client approval, machine shop. And it was like this, this cycle. And I, and I enjoyed it, but at the same time, I was a little jealous and a little envious of all the guys in the machine shop slanging aluminum chips you know and i was like damn they're getting cooling everywhere they're, they're like working man they're like making it you know and so i was kind of stuck in this artificial world of you know just cg you know just a 3d model make cool rendering kick it out and i was always a little envious and i wanted to get in there so when when everyone left <laughs> I, I i looked around and all i heard was crickets so uh I, I went in the machine shop and just started hitting cycle start and, you know, kicking the dust off the machines. And uh, I, I learned, uh, I learned probably, probably the hard way, you know, <laughs> uh, I learned, I really learned by making mistakes, you know, but, but I, I loved it. You know, then, then I was hooked and I was like, you know what, uh, this is, this is what I want to do. You know, I want to take that design to product and truly take it, you know, a full 360 like all the way around you know and make it happen well okay so and so then you know that and that's kind of like the beginnings here so what tell me a little bit about like what your world looks like now i mean you've got you know a couple machines in your in your garage there yeah. i mean what is what is the 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 nuts and bolts of of how you work with the machines now i always wanted my own machine shop you know it was just something that i really wanted deep down because i wanted to be the one that said yes or no and stop or go. You know, I wanted to be the boss. And uh, and you know what? There was a lot of times where I didn't think that was possible because most of the machines that were out there were so expensive, it would have taken like a huge risk on, on my part and my family's part to invest in one of those really expensive machines. And that's where I found Tormach. And I'll never forget it. It was at uh, 3D Experience World 2020, 2019, one of the two. And, and I saw this, this machine just humming and I was like, oh my God, they're making all the parts that like I could make. And it really opened my eyes up. And so now, you know, I'm not making as many motorcycle parts these days, even though there are one or two that, that bop along through here. But now mostly I'm using it to, to prototype 
uh, my, my latest ideas and concepts, and also to make championship belts. I make all the championship belts for WWE, and I also did the World Long Drive competition for NBC Golf Channel, uh, NBC Sports, and uh, ABC Supply Company. They're, they're another great client of mine, and, and they get a championship belt at the end of every year, and they're number one sales branch out of their 800 stores, you know, whoever sells the most. Uh, they, they get a gold-plated, uh, pretty pretty legit, about 50 different gemstones uh, championship belt. So uh, it, I just love the process of creating. You know, you, you start with a blank sheet. You, you sketch something up. You model something up. And then in, when you're modeling it, it changes a little bit. And then you make it, you know. And I just, I just love the moment, you know, the parts, you know, hit the metal over here, so to speak. And... And then I like taking that off. I like deburring it. You know, I like looking at the part, uh, <laughs> just look at it. Uh, but, you know, and then I like the whole process. Like, you know, then it goes out for chrome and gold and I track it down and then the assembly and everything. So it reminds me a lot of like my past life, but it's more parts that like I truly want to make, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, no, and that's, I mean, natural progress right i mean that's the goal yeah. right you work for somebody else you do what they do and then you move into your own space and kind of fill it with what you want right right i don't i don't know what that other machine is um behind you is that a that's a 3d fiber laser dude oh oh okay okay that's uh some big boy equipment there yeah uh, yeah yeah that's so that's, that's yeah so you, so you use that for, uh, for etching and, and marking and stuff like that? Yes. Yes, I do. But now you can, uh, now you can, uh, you can carve with it. Oh, wow. It's really hard to show you on this webcam. Yeah. Yeah. That's one. And then that's really cool though. Oh, that's awesome. There, that, that looks a lot better. Yeah. But you see the layers. Yeah. And then, uh, it does, uh, it just burns it, zaps it, vaporizes the metal. It's that, pretty, pretty legit. What's the primary use for your for your Tormach? But I mean, obviously, like that's your main cutting machine. Yeah, my yeah, my primary use for the Tormach is to to actually machine away, uh, you know, like ninety eight percent of of the championship belts that I make, and then uh, for the really fine stuff. Um, I, look, I got sick of breaking point zero three inch end mills, you know. So like for the really fine stuff, I put it on my 3D laser and just let that thing bite right into it and I get really sharp corners. So I've had like this really unique workflow where I, I start on a mill and that's great. And then I, I, I transition to a laser to get even more detail um, because basically I make jewelry now, you know, <laughs> you know. That's, so. that's awesome. That, well, and, it, and especially when you're working in those small spaces, I mean, like, I, it just doesn't, it isn't conducive to round spinning tools. You know, it's, mm -hmm. that's why those lasers are so profound, especially because they're coming down in price too, just, just like the mills. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, this, this thing, it's from Laser Marking Technologies, LMT, and they're just great, great people over there. Just like, just like Tormach. I, I can really, I, I see the resemblance between both companies. Uh, it's, people that really care about what they're doing, you know? You're doing what a lot of um, potential Tormach owners or, or potential Tormach customers want to do, right? You're, you're, out, you're out on your own. You're making parts with your machines. Um, you know, what's some advice you would give to a future CNC or design? Option? Just do it. Yeah, my, my advice would be to, like, if this is your passion and, and you really know what it is and you're, you want to you wanna make parts, is to just jump in and do it. You know, I wish this is something I could have done 10 years ago. Uh, you know, I, I would have, you know, instead of being 31, 41 right now, I could be 31 right now, you know? <laughs> and uh, you know what? There's, there's always that risk, you know? There's always that fear, but that's what drives us as humans to want to succeed. So, you, you should, you should take that, take that on and, and just go for it. You know, if it's something you really want to commit yourself to and, and make, make things that's, it's necessary for me right now. You know, you know what I mean? Like I, I, I couldn't ever see that machine leave, you know, that, it, it's, it's that, the backbone of my manufacturing system here, you know, really, really is. 
are, are there any pitfalls or, or something that you know you wish you had known before you started other than start earlier <laughs> not really man um okay. I, and I, I just want to say something like I, I come from uh, like the machines I like I, I I learned from just by trial and error were like alien machines mm. like copy button was like f2 and then parameter this that and it was like this weird like what are you talking about this machine is windows based and they use words that i already know <laughs> okay they use words like copy and paste and open and the way that you access the files it's all visual. You see the folders, just like when you're in Windows. You understand copying this file over to here is now in the hard drive, you're ready to run. Um, so for me, like I was a little nervous because I never touched, never touched the Tormach. And then one day it's here and it's like, okay, we, we, got, we got power. Okay, we got air, you know, and let's go, how to, how to figure it out. You know what I mean? And, and I was able to just get the, you know the probe tool in get all my tools touched off and i was able to rip that day and you know i learned as i went but i found myself like whenever i got into trouble or i thought i was in trouble just stop read the interface it's just done like it's amazing it walks you through step by step by step cycle start so i was a little nervous of the interface because i never touched it but i'm telling you it was five times easier than than the other the other machines that that I that I brought myself up on. I got a degree in English and I do marketing and I I can run them right like so right. that's uh, yeah I mean totally I, absolutely dude, that's dude the, the like the, I don't want to drop names but the, dude like the interface is like you you have to like memorize stuff you need like flashcards and the MDI this and this what's in yeah what the, dude and and maybe that's fine maybe that's how the manufacturing world is you know. You know, maybe if you were brought up on that, that's what you do. That's how you do it. Then you know it. But like to just a maker to come in and be like, okay, I just want to copy this file and paste it here. It just, it's right there. It's that easy. Control C, control V works just like on your keyboard, you know? So yeah, a CNC machine with a, with a mouse and a keyboard is the way to go. <laughs> like any, any other touch buttons and dials and spinny jobs and everything else, it's like, it's crazy. But Tormach just, it made that easy. And that was the one thing I was fearing. But until you jump in and do it, you just, you got to experience it for yourself, you know? What types of materials do you cut most? Or is it kind of like whatever the, whatever the project calls for? Mainly I cut aluminum here, like 95% is aluminum. But I did get into toying with making knives and stuff, just, just as like a hobby. And they had no problem cutting the steel blades, you know? So, yeah. Um, it just, you just got to be careful with your tooling that you're using and making sure it's not aluminum only and, and doing that. But with the 12 tool changer on it, that's perfect. It's a perfect number, you know, cause I've had machines with like 31 tools and like, you just get confused because <laughs> there's so many flying around. So, and it changes, the tool changer changes so quick that I don't mind it at all, man. 12 is like perfect number, you know? And I remember I did have a machine back in the day that was like 10. And then one of those had to be for the, the, the touch off probe thing. So it was really just nine. And that was not enough tools, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? So with the Tormach, you get 12 tools in, in the ATC, the automatic tool changer, but uh, you don't have to save one of those for the probe because the probe has a wire to it that's connected. See this guy, the PN, see this? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I call it a probe. It's, yep. it's how I touch off my, my stock. Yep. You know, my, where my X is, where my Y, where my Z is. It's got a cord to it. And I was like, how's this gonna work? You know, it's in a spindle, you know, like, and at first I thought that was gonna be annoying not having it just swing in, but I, I got really used to it. And I, I pop that thing in, plug it in, bam, go. And the, the bottom line is I got 12 live tools ready to rock. That's great. What, what it comes down to is, can I make parts with it? And the answer is like, yes. I've made more championship belts this year already than, than I have any other year. You, you know what I mean? So it, it's amazing. You know, um, I, I love it for that. But uh, it's, uh, 
It's worth its weight in gold to me, you know? <laughs> That's awesome.